Hello, Eddie. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. How are things? Well, okay for now. You know I have been assigned to the new project that involves a new safety instrumented system for our plant. Yes, of course. I recommended you. Thank you so much, Eddie. But now I am afraid I will mess things up. I am not sure where to start. Oh, don't worry. You have also been enrolled in the IPSAM Safety Instrumented Systems e-learning course. Once you do that, everything will be very clear. Yes, yes I know that and I will start it tomorrow. But before that can you give me some tips from your experience? Sure we have a review meeting now, in the next one hour. I will be there about 15 minutes early. If you come to the conference room then, I will give you 5 good tips that will make your life easy. Oh thank you Eddie, you're such a great support. See you then later. Hello Jenny, it's good that you came early. We have some time before the meeting starts. Yes, of course, Eddie. Could we have those design tips that you were going to share? Sure. Here's the first tip. Having a safety instrumented system is just one type of risk reduction measure that we take. So, look at the big picture, not just the SIS. Try to use multiple ways to reduce the risk. The SIS is not the only way. You mean by using other means of risk reduction like mechanical safety relief valves, and so on? Yes, there should be multiple protection layers. Everything should not just depend on the SIS. Okay, I get it. Tip number two, try to quantify the existing risk and the acceptable risk. If you do not know these numbers, then you can never find out how much risk reduction you need. That means you cannot do any meaningful calculations about what SIL you need. You mean these figures of risk are not easily available? Yes, you will have to calculate them or estimate them yourself. You can get some estimates during the hazard and risk assessment phase. Also, be sure to ask the management about what their currently acceptable level of risk is. Only then can we talk about risk reduction. Understood. What next? Tip number three is to start collecting reliability data now, before you start designing your system. That will make the design process much faster. Look at the manufacturer's data as well as our own plant maintenance records to get the correct estimate. Vendor data could be optimistic and may be good only under ideal conditions. Oh, that means I should not accept the certificates that they give at face value. Not necessarily, but read the fine print in the accompanying report. Talk to old employees here about the actual performance of the devices in our other plants. That will give you a more realistic reliability figure rather than some test data that is gathered from only ideal conditions. That's great. I never thought about this. Tip number four. Keep an eye on possible common cause failures. You may have the best hardware for the devices, but a low-quality power supply can cause all of them to fail at the same time. When you design redundancy, also look at the common cause failures. That is good. I will keep that in mind. Last tip. Pay more attention to the field devices like sensors, transmitters, and valves. They fail much more than logic solvers. So do not spend your time too much on discussing whether triple modular logic solvers are better or quad ones or some other type. If the SIF fails it is more likely that it is due to a bad transmitter or a stuck valve rather than a fail logic solver. Remember the field devices are in harsh conditions in the field in rain and snow, unlike the logic solver, which is in a clean, temperature controlled environment. That's something to chew on. Can you summarize everything that you just said? Sure. Take a look 